Well, hello and welcome. We're back to our uh, top-down view again today because we're going to be unboxing a lot of stuff. So, let's get started. The first kit we're going to look at to unbox is the Master Grey Gundam F90. This is a, um, this is one, I think this is a second model thus far uh, in the Mastery line that is entirely P Bandai. So from the ground up, P Bandai only. But we can see that this is a uh, very much a colored box and we can see that, you know, here we can see that it has like all the usual box uh, art and whatever and uh, all the markings, you know, this this stuff is all standard, but then usually with the P-Bandai you get a smart you get a single colored box and um, yeah, not much else. So, you know, this is all colored and uh, we get, you know, a lot more description here. So, let's see what we have in here. Alright, first we have the multicolor A runner and we have something that's already fallen out, but that's okay. It just looks like it's a peg from a runner. It's a blue that's a blue guy. So it's this part of the shield. That's not bad. That's not bad. Because uh that will probably be recessed. We got a wireless light decal that looks like that. Zoom in a little bit to take a better look. Or I can just bring this up, right? We can see that the markings are, you know, the F, the 90, SNRI, EFSF. Now there is also a purple version of this that came out immediately after I got this. I wish I got the purple one. Yeah, a multicolor A part. Here we have our standard beam saber. Uh, we have some of our beam rifle part and some of these hard points. And here we have the shield. Uh, we have the head, some skirting armor, leg parts, head parts. So that's the mask. Not, nothing too special here. We got some foot parts, these are pretty rare I feel, uh, blue parts for feet. Uh, in Gundams, that's, that's, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, something that's not great, so you can see that these, the triangle here, uh, where my, uh, in, the mid, in the center of the screen right now, that's, uh, that's not covered. You probably are going to get a sticker with this. So some more white parts. Here we have the leg armors and shoulder armor and arm, it looks like. This one looks like a foot, this one looks like the knee. Nothing uh, too fancy here either. We got a purple runner. This one is, so I'm going to guess this one's ABS. Okay, there's another loose part in here. Oh man, this kid has seen better days. Uh, you can see that my shield, this part for the shield is also kind of bent out of the frame. Oh, it is what it is, I guess. So this part is for, I don't know, this is probably for the waist. So it's not too bad that I fell out. But yeah, looks like there is no... Oh, this is ABS. And this is on label, so it's probably the KPS or PS material. Doesn't really say, but 2019 runner, as expected. Here we have some color correcting stickers. Right in the center here, uh, looks like we have some, you know, the, the triangles. And then these two... Uh, Black stickers right here. Let's zoom in. And we also have a tube. I think that is for the either the backpack or the back of the leg. 
and then we have a small uh, so this is like a nylon tube and then we have a small uh copper core thing welcome eboy 80 we are looking at f90 this is just unboxed i'm not building it today uh this is a abs runner as well and finally we got a manual This is uh, once again a very, very not P Bandai like manual. This is all colored. You know, we got our standard manual, both the um, the front and back cover. This is the same art as the. Yep. Yeah. So this is the same art as the uh, the box front. So you know exactly like a normal Bandai kit. Here we have some of the descriptions uh, for who want to look at this. You guys can take a still here. Uh, this is in multi-language, so that's pretty cool. Do I plan to buy any of the option packs? No, but I do want to get an F90 purple variant. Oh, here we have the center fold. So once again, this is very, very much uh, not p bandai like and then you get the whole thing you get you know all this information so you know for those who want to take a look you guys can pause now oh, so here is where the the mesh pipe is what they called goes so it looks like it is in the back of the ankle so we can see that here it dictates that the mesh pipe should be used and then it goes into this part here and then it goes to uh, the bottom of the leg. Now where's, oh, and then the mesh pipe is also used right here with the, um, with the wire. So that's at the foot section, inside of the foot. Interesting. So there is a section where you can see the mesh pipe. Huh. Yep. So everything is super, super standard. We got our shield, we got our rifle. We got a couple e packs, and then we have you know part points for all the parts, and there is a uh, the weird uh, swing out mechanism that we saw on the F ninety one is also here, the swing out pelvis, and yeah, that's the Gundam F ninety. Next. We are looking at the death size. And this is death size from, um, what's this from again? Glory of Loser. Um, most of the kit is the same aside from the, the Rosette unit. And here we have it fighting. I'm not sure what it is fighting, not from this angle. Yeah, I have no clue. I want to say Sandrock, but I'm not sure. Anywho, so here this is a more P Bandai like box. Oh, we can see that it's single color, and uh, we are just getting shades of uh, blue. Actually, it looks a little bit more purple, but yeah. Let's pop this bad boy open. So, our first runner here is, um, I don't know if this is a new part or not, I have not built a base kit, I have the Death Scythe Hell, but not the Death Scythe. Alright, so this looks like a, a old runner, it says uh, Death Scythe EW, 
this looks like a, uh, this is the A runner. Looks like it's old as well. Let's see the date on this. So 2010 and 2010. So this is uh, nothing new. Now we get a glorious sheet of water slide decal because Katoki is um, likes the water slides and likes the markings. Very nice. X X X X X G O one D. Uh, this is the XB runner now. This is the ABS runner that we have seen with all the wing kits. That's not the wing itself and the targets. Uh, we got some foot and some toe spikes. These will be uh, also from 2010. All right, so first set of new runners. So C2 is actually a new runner, I believe. Um, it is from 2010. Huh, I thought this would be a new runner. Um, they did, I think they did some changes here. So uh, you can see kind of faintly. Let me zoom in. So kind of faintly, there is a, a detail here. Let me see if I can catch a light a little bit better inside this plastic. But I guess that's not possible. Uh, but there's a little bit of detail uh, right here. Ooh, okay, so when if my finger is here blocking the light, you can see it very well. So a little bit of detail right there. I don't believe that is there for the regular death scythe. Or the death scythe help. And here we have a part of the rosette unit. Um, this is definitely from 2020. Let's check the date. Yep, it's from 2020. So the date is usually behind the um, the name plate marker. So, well, it's a real site unit, so must be the new runner. We can see that there's the regular death size color, some red and some, what is this? This is fairly orange. Zoom out. And uh, some white. This, this wing reminds me very, very much of the Vercaw wing. Yeah. But here we have another C runner. This would have been the use aside from these two pieces. And here we have another uh, rosette unit runner. So this piece we have seen, but there is this section that is, you know, the center bit and then we also have uh, these two winglets. Uh, this is very, very, so this is a slightly different. Uh, no, it's the same orange. Okay, so same orange as uh, the other one. We have our, yeah, this runner would be something that I don't think I've seen. Because uh, I have the side health, health, and the side health shouldn't have the G1 runner. Uh, because the shoulder, this stuff, that stuff, that stuff is all different. Uh, the chest pieces are the same, the face pieces are the same, but these, most of this runner is not. So, you know, standard runner from before. All right, we have the scythe itself. It comes with two effect parts. That's um, very, very fluorescent as a sink on camera. And we have some of the, the exterior armor that's uh, also from 2010. So nothing new here. And we have some poly caps. So the F90 that we just saw, no poly caps. And uh, here we have uh, the XX. G frame that's shared between the sand rock, sand long, um, heavy arms, and sand, and that side. Yes, I say sand rock twice. One of my friends says I like sand rock too much. I don't. I like them all equally unless it is wing. Yep, so this is just the standard runner. Here we have the manual. So the manual is, uh, you get two manuals. So A and B. 
this is just the regular EW manual that uh, it's from 2010, as it says here. MG Bandai 2010, made in Japan. Uh, this would be pretty standard, and then you know, I think this is the first non wing master grade. Um, everything else came after this, so this is the one that's uh started the share frame. It, it makes perfect sense because that's that's the entire slip of the different uh, part of the slip of the franchise. All right, now we have uh, this kit. Sorry, this manual. So this is the Rosette Uni manual, and we can see that uh, now we can finally get some color references. We can see that you know this is a very very uh, wing Vercot esque wing that it got on the back, and then here is a rear beauty shot. Yep, nothing. Huh, I swear I thought the calf was different. I am wrong, and that is okay. Oh, huh, I thought the calf is a little bit different. Oh well. Because looking at these two, yeah, the calf is exactly the same. Mm, is it? Yep, the calf is exactly the same. All right, moving on. Next, we got the Kubli Embeller, and this is from Gundam Bill Diver, Jim and Balls World Champion. Sorry, Jim and Balls World Challenge. So this would have been the recolor version of the Kubli Damned, uh, which is just a slight upgrade over the, the original, very, very old MG Kubli. And this is supposed to be paired with the uh, Hyakushiki Rise King, which is just this like plated beauty of a kid. I think it's, I don't remember what type of plating I use, if it's the, the Hyakushiki Kai 2.0 type plating, or it's the, uh, the Master Grade uh, Hyakushiki 2.0 plating. It's like Shane Ping or just straight bling. All right, let's pop this open. Well, let's, uh, here we can see that, yeah. What's the difference between this and the damned? Um, aside from the plastic coloring, it's just uh, the decal. Speaking of decal, the decal right here. You can see that they're very, very generous. It's very shiny. It's water slide only. Um, yeah, metallic water slide decal that is uh, just just says QA. Why does it QA? Should it be? Should it say QE? Okay. All right. Like these decals are much better looking than one that came with the damned. Damned is just damned shaping a triangle. Uh, there's a little bit of the gloss injection going on with the purple and uh, and this uh, gunmetal part. And uh, extraordinarily high gloss. Uh, I'm not sure if it's catching the light. Yeah, extremely high gloss for like these parts. Uh, this part is a waste part, by the way. Where does this come from? So like here? Okay, I'm okay with that. Here we got some more, extreme, once again, extremely, extremely high gloss parts from, and this would have been the, from the original Kubli from, 
What year it is? What year it is? 2001. So this is effectively a 20 year old kit. Yep. Here we have some of the purple bits. So this is the shared uh, damned part, I think. Uh, nope, this is just the original part. And I just said purple. By purple, I mean pink. And on the back side, we have also some more parts from 2001. These are the waist parts. Here you can see that, you know, this just T-shaped waist uh, pelvis. That is just um, very, very old school. You know, it doesn't need to move around. It's master grade, right? As long as it look good and uh, it's sizable and have an inner frame. That, that, that was a, the, what we expect uh, from a master grade from 2000. And one. Here we have some of these uh, blue parts for the, I guess the vents on the Kubli, and these uh, SB1 from 2006. So this saber is actually newer than the Kubli itself. I wonder what the original one came with. So we got some more of these purple parts. Uh, for like the, the cuffling, the back of the leg, and I think this is the side of the leg is what I want to say. Yeah, all, all of this is from uh, 2001. Yep. Some more parts from 2001, but only on this side. So this is more of the leg parts. This is still the leg part, the pelvis, outer armor. And we have the um, Kubli Dam parts here. So let's do a quick comparison. So this is the head for the Kubli Dam. And here you can see that there is uh, quite a bit of carving and uh, detail. But if we compare it to this guy here, it's completely smooth. And that's part of the, the different differentiation that they did for the Kubli Dam. Uh, you can also see from this bit, this bit has a lot of uh, different carving as well. Whereas this piece here is just completely smooth. Yeah, Kubli Dam. Kubli Dam, a kit where they pre prescribe the kit for you. Uh, something that's very old school. There's a big uh, PC polycap, and we have a sticker just for the eyes, nothing else. Ah, here's another damned uh, piece. Vents that are newly designed for the Kubli. Damned, and uh, now also reused for the embalmer. Uh, bottom of the feet. Uh, this is the thumb, I believe. And then we have the, the awesome looking fingers. Uh, these fingers are only articulating at this point, so the, these two joints on the finger does not move. Uh, they do make it kind of easy for you to modify it. So if you, you take a look in the middle, you can see that there's round holes uh, where you can insert a, um, you know, a... What do you call those? Sock, peg, and, peg and socket uh, type uh, aftermarket parts, aftermarket, third party parts. Here we have some of the inner workings of the wing, uh, the shoulder binders and uh, the legs. These are all, uh, we're going to be reusing all of these other than the foot. And the same part here. Here is another polycap runner because uh, polycaps are freaking great. And uh, this is the, the part that got a lot of people into this kit. So here in the center, we have the spine or the, the torso that's very uh, five star story looking. And uh, we got some of the same parts, the hands, the, sorry, the fingers, the thumb, and then some of the 
uh, the shoulder vents. And here we have the actual hand, the palm of the hands right here. And uh, this is uh, part of the waist as well. And guess what? We get another set of hands. In this, uh, this is basically a, um, like a really dark, like at least on the camera, it looks like it's uh, actually coated, but just gloss injection. I assume that this is pretty hard, which is not great uh, because uh, these are quite fragile because they're too long. Uh, for their uh, construction. But yes, we get two sets of uh, fingers. I guess so. Uh, we only need these parts. Oh. We got some uh, really, really fluorescent. Uh, what are these? These are um, the forearm parts. And I think these are the forearm parts. Uh, and then this is also a forearm part and this is the heel and this is where they block where the beam saber comes out. I, I never got that mechanism. Oh, we got the toe. I don't remember what that part is. And then we got the, the forearm and we got two, of the, two sets of those. And finally, we have, uh, this is uh, the regular Kubli parts. So the parts that covers the, the vents and then some of the regular hand parts that we won't be using. And uh, to my surprise, we actually get it in bulk. Ooh. That's interesting. That's interesting. So this was actually sourced from not Japan. Because uh, if you buy it from Japan, that doesn't come with a translation guide. Let's leave that in there. In case I need to go from a language I can't read to another language that I can't read. Aha. So it looks like we're going to be keeping the gray fingers, but not the blue fingers, but we get to keep those blue fingers. So, you know, that's really cool. Welcome Corona. So this is not Puru because this is a, oh, this is from Build Fighter. Sorry, this is from Build Diver. So this is the one where kids build a Gundam and then they pilot in game to fight each other. So this is not a Puru kit, but you can let your imagination run wild. All right, so we can see that we have we do have a lot of waste part because um, it's the basically a full cubely kit um, with uh, some surface detail changes. Uh, the kit is really quite simple. Um, we have a lot of really, really large parts. Hi, fruit dealer. Hi, Commander Root. Hey, fruit dealer. So yeah, this is what the kit can look like once it's built. And uh, I guess you wouldn't, I guess you should paint it and to get that more of that pearly white. And we can see that uh, the colors in the shoulders are asymmetrical because in the regular Kubli would have been pink and pink on both sides, but this time around it's pink and uh, blue. Uh, they're quite, um, it is a metallic blue. Everything is either metallic or pearl. Well, pretty, really pretty kit. But uh, building it will be not so enjoyable, I imagine, because once again, old kit. Oh boy, it is from... 
Huh, interesting. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. All right. So next up is Gray Zeta from Gundam Evolve. So this is from I think the episode nine, as is marked here, uh, from Gundam Evolve. It comes uh, in the sh at least in the in that episode of Gundam Evolve. There was the White Zeta, Gray Zeta, and Red Zeta. Now the Gray Zeta is yellow. They are naming the the color. The color that came before the Zeta is actually uh, more towards the codename of the pilots than the color of the suit themselves. Um, this is yellow because it's supposed to have an anti beam layer like a Hyakushiki, so really it should be more like golden color and sparkly. But here we are, it is yellow kit. I have the the red Zeta as well, but I do not have white Zeta because you know when I bought Zeta 2.0, I'm just like, oh, there's a white one and there's a regular color. I'm gonna get the regular color one. Biggest mistake. Well, not the biggest mistake. A mistake. Green Eyes White Dragon. Yes. All right. So this is gonna be a kit with a lot of wasted part as well, but most of it's based on the Gundam, uh, Gundam Zeta 2.0 from 2005. So 16 year old kit. This kid would been going into high school right now, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, this is a large sticker as you guys can already see. So um, this is the Zeta part and we can see some of the, the foot. Um, this looks like the leg thruster, more leg thruster parts, some of the arm parts. This looks like knee armor, uh, some of the arm parts again. Yeah, this is the side skirt actually. Uh, where did this go? It came from here. So can go here. here we have the exact same part in a different color so yeah at least half of this will be thrown away here we get the inner frame so this is from yeah well this is the inner frame so it's the 2005 one um yeah so we can see this is the actually the the lower leg calf part this is the thigh part uh, we can see some of the you can see some of the parts from the uh, the forearm once again like calf thigh and uh, yeah some of i haven't built a zeta in a very very long time so i don't really remember this is the shoulder connection armor and this is probably the the elbow joint Now finally something a little bit exciting. We got wow, okay, this is a big big boy. Alright, first big boy part on this is a sticker sheet. So um no water slide, just just large, large sheet of sticker. If you do want to uh get it to the correct color, you know, best of luck. I don't remember if they release a water slide decal for this. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't. I know they did it for the white Zeta. Uh, here we can see the, the personal emblem. Uh, let's do it right side up. So this is the personal emblem for uh, Grey Wolf, also known as Shinmatsunanga, a ex Zeon pilot. Uh, here we can see behind this big sticker is uh, a, more of the inner frame parts. And on the other side, we have the the old uh, version 2.0 parts and very interestingly uh, because this runner is black on the 2.0 so the right the beam rifle here is actually going to be orange or yellow this is uh, basically a um, 
What's the best way to describe this color? This is um, what do you call that? The 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 spray orange. Sorry, not the spray orange. You know the cheese whiz orange, maybe. Yeah, I think this is cheese whiz orange. All right, so top side first. Uh, we have some of uh, the reused parts, and then oh, we have we do have a wire side detail. Just a very small one, and then just with the Grey Wolf logo and some of the markings. None of those big stripes. Um, black parts, uh, this part would have been a multicolored part back then because uh, these are the thrusters on the calf and these will be yellow on the regular uh, Zeta 2.0. And uh, some parts, you know, this is the shield, this is the wing, this is the tail binder thing. On the back side, we have um, back side is a new runner. It says uh, the runner name is R and it's MG1100 Gray Zeta. It is from 2015. Yeah, this is not that new a kit, I just missed the opportunity to buy it. So we can see that uh, they are definitely making some changes uh, to the kit. I will drink some water. All right. So here we can see that in the middle here, they're changing the face. It looks like they're adding a little bit more armor on the two sides. Uh, we can see that the waist is also changed uh, for what reason I'm not sure yet maybe just that it needs a different color uh, we can see that here it's some of the mechanism that's needed for the new rifle that goes in the nose of the transfer well, it's a new it's a new shield rifle thing and here we can see some more of the shield rifle parts maybe and here is a quad thruster arrangement looking thing that I'm not sure what it is. Uh, here we can see that there are some show, uh, these are the knee armors, I think, but then with a little bit more detail and the triangle emboss, emboss triangles. What else that is strange that I recognize? Yeah, what is this for? This is interesting. Uh, we have the different thrusters so these parts this part and that part uh, these are thrusters uh, for the calf i believe they're different and directly to the right of it is the clear parts that's used for the uh, the new rifle here we have a big poly cap that's blocking a bunch of the stuff that we actually want to look at so here is a brand new runner once again uh so here we can see the front skirt uh that's all marked up uh, we can see that there is some uh, embossment right there and some circular uh, accents and uh, more triangular accents like throughout we can see that this thing oh actually oh i see how that works okay so these two parts, these big parts, actually go inside this thing as well. So this is the calf armor. Um, it looks very, very different. I think we're going to get a runner for the original one, so we can do a quick comparison a bit. But it looks uh, very different from the previous one. Uh, this, the, the red Zeta also have this uh, part swapped out because it has this um, fin-looking thing, like a F91-esque fin. The inside of the calf also has uh, different markings, well, different uh, surface details. Drop, drop the polycap. Drop the polycap. All right, so here we have the, the butt armor. Oh, you can see that butt armor has some indentations. Maybe this is a better direction. So there's some indentations and then some surface details on it. The shoulder armor also has uh, three uh, indentations on it as well. 
uh, you see that piece in the middle right now? That's a side skirt. Even the back armor is going to be different. And also the arm armor. Yeah, so they're just adding a little bit of indentation everywhere for this kit uh, to make sure they're more detailed. And here is what this part would have looked like. So here we can see the original parts. There's no, the detail is fairly, fairly different. For example, let's look at the rear skirt in the middle. It looks like this right now. There's a, you know, some triangular details in there. And then on the new runner, it looks like this where there's a lot more, uh, uh, I would guess, horizontal markings. Yeah, it's fairly interesting. Looks like the inner um, inner piece is still gonna be the same though. And here we have the original data face plate, so um, you can swap them out as you please, I suppose. And we have the Zeta head as well. I guess, I, I don't know how many you get in this kit. This. Okay. All right, two new runners again. And so, so many stickers for uh, various sites. What do we got here? So it looks like part of the the wing binders on the, the the wing binders on back needs to be switched out. The tail binder we already know that needs to be switched out because it has a splitting too. I believe these are more tail binder parts. These ones I don't know, but this is the new uh, shield that you get. Wow, this is actually fairly fairly thick. And uh, as all the parts. Uh, we have seen so far on this kit there's stripes everywhere on the back side we get inside of the shield that just have like the tread pattern like how big is that that's like one centimeter wide so this tread pattern will be like a meter long what the heck Anyways, so uh, looks like the shield is like a three piece affair. You got this piece, you got this piece, and then you got you know this piece on the back. And also you got the big uh, rifle, left right part, and uh, there's some, uh, I don't know, it looks like sights for the rifle. Yep, not quite sure. Oh, right. We have the, the antenna for the Zeta. This is reuse, and then this is a, a pretty pretty soft material, if I remember, remember correctly. Uh, some more of the parts, uh, that's the same as the, the runner right here. Uh, but then for the, for, for the forearm, the side skirt, the shoulder, and whatever this does. Oh, this is still the shoulder. This is still the shoulder. Oh, okay, some old parts from before. This runner would have been red because this is the foot, as I mentioned earlier. Generally, Gundam foots are red. And this is the you know outer part of the wing binder that's uh, kind of highlighted red as well. This would have been, yeah, this is from 2005. Now, of course, we're gonna need to have orange parts everywhere. So here's the orange part that is, um, just, 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 just slightly different. Actually, no, this is the exact same thing again. Yep, this is the exact same part, but in orange. So we get a run, we, we get a, yeah, the B running orange as well. Uh, here we have some of the, the inner frame, the pieces that we don't need because uh, there's the, the, uh, the other details that we're gonna get. Um, yeah, so these, both of these run are from 2005, I think this is the best year, I don't know. Here, 
this is the, the really ridiculously large and hard to display action base that comes with the Zeta. So it looks like a, um, you know, this, what, what do you call this? The hanger launch pad? But this is so much bigger than the regular one. Let me show you what the regular one looks like. So this is the one that you get from a uh, Wing Zero. Yeah, it's about this big, large, this much bigger. And if you don't need this, it's basically twice the size. It's huge. It's a pain, but I don't use it for either of my Zeta kits. But it does uh, look cool to a certain extent. All right, last bag. So in this bag, we have the Hyper Mega Launcher. And then we have some of the chess pieces and then more of the launcher parts. I don't remember what that is. Uh, underside of the boob, I guess. We get the beam saber. Uh, and then we get some more inner frame parts. So all this is from the, the original release. Oh boy, that was a good vacuum. Let's hope it fits later. Right, manual. So once again, we got a color manual, and uh, but this time we don't get any of the any of the you know the F ninety comes kind of comes with somewhat of the introduction on the first page, but nothing here. Uh, here we can see that we have a lot of unused parts. That's all grayed out. Oh, I'm very surprised that I still use the same, like the top of the chest piece. I thought there would be some stripes on them. Is the chest piece just entirely the same? No, the chest piece has different, uh, different uh, waist armor. All the gist of it is the same. Hi, MS Lenity. Welcome to a stream. We're just unboxing a bunch of P Bandai's because I thought that this would be fun. I thought it would be fun until I realized I have to talk so much. And my mouth is really dry. Right now we're looking at the Grey Zeta. Master grade, and uh, it's very orange. It's like this Cheeto cheese with orange. Yeah, here is like the really, really scary parts of the kit. Look at how many stickers you got to put on. Yeah, so the sticker count at least goes up to 77, 85. Okay, never mind. So the highest sticker number I've seen so far is 93. Yep, 93 stickers. And I don't know, I don't think that's counting the, the lenses, it's just the, the stripes, the stripey ones. You can see that, you know, the, the main weapon, the launcher that it gets, it's fairly sizable. And it gets three launchers. It still gets the regular shield as well. Huh. You can see that these are the weapon that it gets. So the top, the, the first one, uh, if we just look at the clockwise from the top left, it's just called beam cannon. It's pretty simple in terms of construction, just left, right sandwich. I think that's a good thing because it makes the weapon pretty light. Uh, the one with the shield is called the Mega Gatling. We have the regular shield that's the, exactly the same as um, uh, the, the regular Zeta. Same goes for the Bing Rifle and same goes for the Hyper Mega Launcher. Those are all just uh, UVU's parts. 
And here we have a little bit of instruction for the action base and how to put on all the different accessories, like the grenade launcher. And we have a couple pages for transformation. And transforming, these are just a joy. If you really want to uh, have a wave rider mode, buy another one. Just, just buy another one. It's maybe meant to transform once or twice, and any more than that, I think it's uh, dangerous, especially if it's just, like one of these P Bandai kids. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Oops. That's what this looks like when it's all transformed. Look at this uh, big hunk cut. Big. Big. There's a mega beam cannon at the front. Yes, that's what it's called. And you know, some color picks. You can see that, um, yeah, there, there, there's quite a bit. So anything that is not a orange, that's on the orange, that's a sticker. It has no ability. Oh, it does have a, the, the ability to carry both weapons at once. Okay, so lots of weapons for this big guy too. All right, and the kit that a fruit dealer is waiting for, the Sandrock Armadillo. Sandrock. Once again, Sandrock. His favorite kit. Uh, once again, P Bandai packaging. Just a single color that is appearing as more green on screen, but this is actually a pretty flat gray in my eyes. Um, yeah, it's a pretty flat gray, but I guess there's a little bit of green in there. Eh, crappy camera. Uh, we can see that this is, uh, once again, from the Gloria Loser, similar to the um, the death scythe. I didn't put it together because this is wider. All right. Right, finally Sandrock. I knew, I knew you were waiting for it. Here we are greeted immediately with the armadillo parts. So these are the the shield looking things that goes on the the shoulder and naturally because katoki kit so big ass water slide decal and behind it uh, we just have the regular sand rock part so when I was building this, something kind of stupid occurred. Um, at, in this, the, in the EW version, the Sandrock, not the endless, not for the, uh, the OVA version, not the custom one. All these part, in the custom one, all these parts, they're the same color as the part that's attached to. So basically you're just putting together eight pieces for the front skirt, but they're all just white. Yeah, I was just like, why are, did you guys design it like this? But anyways. Hello, another... Another TT viewer? Okay. Here we have uh, some more uh, standard Sandrock parts uh, from what year is this? 2011. Yep, nothing, nothing particularly out of the ordinary here. So we got some of the thruster parts. This I think is for the ankle. I don't, don't, don't quote me on that. This is definitely for the cuff. And uh, we got some parts for the legs, some parts for the shoulder. This one I don't remember. And then this is definitely for the shoulder again. This is a pretty uh, loosely packed box, I have to say, compared to the Zeta just now. This also costs like way less than the Zeta. Uh, here we have some parts for the head. 
uh, for the shoulder and then I don't remember what these are for. I guess these will be the front and rear skirt, uh, front and side skirts. Yep, don't remember what these are for again. Here we have the parts for the foot. Once again, rear foot, not red. But considering how this is not the, the main character's unit, the Wing Gundam, which has red feet, you know, so, so that's fine. I think all the Wing Gundam from the, the animated series that is, has a Wing Gundam in it, has red feet. I can see that the Wing Zero Custom that's just kind of lying there flat have red feet. Enough about red feet. Here we got clear cards from the eye and clear cards for the sh clear parts for the shield. Some poly, and then we have some nice bright yellow parts for all the different accent pieces, like inside of the shield, the fang on the shield, and then I think that these goes on the leg. I know that these goes on the the shoulder. Some of the one of the thing about the shoulder is that at least on the Sandra custom. The so Sandra Custom is supposed to have uh, thrusters uh, where I'm pointing at. So one, two, three, four, and then I think uh, that's it because it's only on the front side. They're supposed to have thrusters to improve its uh, space maneuverability. That's part of the that's part of the custom bit, but they didn't recreate that. Uh, this is still a old one, I believe. Yep, from two two thousand eleven. Um, these looks, I have no idea what this is for. They may be shoulder parts for uh, holding the, the weapon that I can't remember what's called. And then we have the backpack. That's too far, two bags. So here is the front uh, armor that the armadillo has and some of the inner parts. Uh, for the the four binders, and I I believe that this is for the the new backpack that it has. All oh, right, they're called Tomfus probably. Uh, here is some of the holder of the beam. There's the tiny tiny submachine gun. Some more of the thruster and uh, these uh, ink uh, joint pieces. That's right, this is a, like a Uzi, hilarious. Here we have Quattro. Some shield pieces, some more of the shoulder pieces, calves. Yeah, and thighs. Face. So this is the XXG frame. This would this is exactly the same one as we've seen in the the best side, except this is slightly smaller because some of the parts are not reused. We can see that we need some color corrections for um, reds and whites. I'm not sure where, but yeah, this is a, just a runner that that's not that interesting. All right, so some more parts. So this is the white accent I can see on the armor pieces for the armadillo. And uh, I guess uh, some accent pieces for the rear side of the, uh, for the shoulder, I think, attachment for the armadillo, if I remember correctly. That's the M1 runner. And these from 2020. All right, this is the specific inner frame parts for the sand rock. We can see that, you know, we got the, the tonfa, we got the tonfa attachments, the inner skirts, the pelvis rear, front and rear, the calves, this would be the knee joint, I believe, and then the pilot, the, the cockpit, yes. And another XS, XXXG frame with uh, all the common parts. So this frame we were seeing on this on the best side just now. And with this, we get two sets of being tonfas. One in the silver color, one in the clear red. 
So I think this is only for the the uh, you only get it on the non OV non custom version. But the custom version you only get the the silver set. And finally, we have one more runner uh, for the, the armadillo set. So we got some uh, thruster parts, I think. Uh, some of the inner armor pieces, the shoulder armor, the backpack, some more shoulder armor pieces, whatever this is. Uh, some attachment parts that I don't really recognize. And uh, at the back side, it's just a reduced set. For the inside of some of this armor where they won't be covered, they're, I guess this kind of looks like a chestnut because there is some pattern on the bottom half and there's a cap. I'm not sure why they did that, but I guess it's better than blank. All right then. Manual. So we still get this, uh, this is still the, the dual manual deal. We still get the regular one. And I think I buy, this is was the second last release or the last release kit. Uh, of, okay, so this is the second last release kit of the EW line. The uh, heavy arm will be in the last. You can see that, you know, that's why it's not here. We can see that, you know, it has a wing, has a sand rock, has that side, has shenlong. But no heavy armor. But yeah, they're just saying that this is from uh, Glory of Loser manga and uh, also appearing from time to time in the Frozen Teardrop novel. Yeah, this is basically exactly the same as the. No, it is exactly the same. Now, new parts. So this is a little bit different from the previous one because they're specifying that there are parts from the original kit that you're not supposed to be using. And this is what it looks like when it's all armored up. And the rear side. Look at how forward this thing is leaning. Huh. Let's look at this a little bit. Looks like they are replacing a integral part of the shoulder piece. Um, so unlike the Sandrock Custom, uh, the, the shoulder armor does not plug into a... So in the Sandrock Custom, you remove a cap on the shoulder and then you plug it into the hole the cap came from. Uh, but this one looks like you are using this M1-2 part right here, and then just making it a lot taller uh, for better attachment, I guess. XAD115, so they're not reinforcing the waist, but they are uh, making a different backpack, slightly different backpack. No, that is much longer than before. It is using still a lot of the older parts. Uh, they are effectively just extending the backpack by a whole bunch. That sounds about right. Yep. And I think that it is still articulating to a certain extent, but we'll find out when we build it. And we got a shield. It looks like a uh, two to three piece affair. Oh no, it's actually not. So each of the largest set of shield that we see here is a four-piece affair. 
uh, like basically there's four layers of stuff on there. Uh, so this is the less uh, armored up, uh, that less armored, uh, same, same armor, but the, what the set with less armament. So there's still a version where, um, at least in the manga, where it has um, basically the, it looks like the GPO2 MLRS launchers, but attached to the shields themselves, attached to the shields. So maybe we can look forward to one of those to be released. All right, and now we're gonna move on to our final, final kit. So here we have in a very red and not definitely not pink box is the Testament Gundam. So Testament Gundam is from one of the seed Gundam seed uh, variation. I think it's the one. It's Astray. I know it's Astray, but which Astray I don't remember. There's too many. Uh, there's too many side story for Astray. Also, where is the gold frame? I want the gold frame, please. Uh, so this is the Testament Gundam. It is from, I believe this is Orb. Yeah, uh, this is Omni, which I believe is Orb. I don't remember. But anyways, it is yet another Gundam in the Seed universe. So let's kind of get to it. Uh, a lot of the parts, on this kit will be new, but um, uh, they are they are reusing uh, pieces of the strike frame. This is the strike RM frame, not the original strike frame, but they're they're, they're similar enough. All right, first runner, new runner from year two thousand, and we also have a sticker right there for the eyes. Now. Do you see this ridiculousness of antenna? Do you see this ridiculousness of antenna? Yeah, me too. Let's compare it to something that I know the size of. Let's not do that. Let me just give you a reference. Tools. More tools. So this is the God Hand glass cutting mat. Each grid is one centimeter. So we can see that this is uh, effectively five centimeters apart, tip to tip. And they are very, very, very afraid of um, it being broken during shipping. You can see that they are, they, they spend the extra plastic to make sure it's protected on all sides. And the Testament Gundam, I, as I recall from the lore, this is used for basically electronic warfare. It can infect other people's computer or something and then take over and do weird stuff. Yeah, here we have, um, you know, this piece, that piece, they're all for the, the, the hand or the binder that's magical. When it transforms, it does one thing. When it transforms into another, it does another thing. So this is that portion. And here we have some of the chest pieces, some more of this pattern stuff. So I assume for the back as well. This is like the wing tip for the, the back pack some parts for the the hand armament i forgot what it's called and some chest vents cool now we get two shades of red here uh that you can kind of see fairly clearly um so this is one shade of red and then this is the other actually no these are the two same shades of red so there's, but this is a better comparison. So we have a lighter shade of red on the left and then a darker shade of red on the right. 
Uh, there's also a version of it that has a lot of white, so they may just take, they may just do it and release a kit that's based on that. You can see that they have already uh, made the necess necessary arrangements to do that, because you can see that they can cut the, uh, the injection site off pretty cleanly with this peg here. There's also like one, two, three. Yeah, it's it's very very compartmentalized. Here we have the attachment point that's exactly, oops, exactly the same as the uh, the, the strike. And uh, we have some of the chest pieces. Oh, this is great. You can see that chest piece is asymmetrical. Isn't that cool? Um, I have not built the, the strike RM, so, and this is just an entirely new kit to me. So I don't recognize a lot of this stuff. You have to bear with me. Here we have another set of antenna right here. And flip it over. Oh, we have the head. We have the head pieces. And then chest piece, the legs. Uh, I assume the front and back of the knee, side skirts. Front pelvis, rear pelvis, shoulder armor, forearm. Not sure what that is, but then definitely thighs. The detail on this kit is pretty great. It does remind me of the um, the Astray kits more so than the the regular seed kits. But then again, for the regular C kit, there's only one kit that I have that is not Astrid, and that is a Strike E IWSP. And I have three variants of Astrid. Here we can see that the faceplate is hollowed out. All right, so this is more of the same pieces from that runner, so we won't go through it. And this is also more of the same pieces from the other runner that's dark red, so we won't go through that either. Here we have the D runner called the X frame. We have things that's flopping around in there. Hmm, I thought I heard something. Anyways, uh, I assume the X frame is the seed frame. Yeah, it's called the seed X frame. At least that's what this says. It says seed X frame. And uh, it is from the year 2012. So I assume it's a strike RM, but at the same time, I am not confident because I haven't built it. Uh, but from what I've heard, at, the, at least in 2012, they released a new Verka in 2013, I think. So this would have been a pretty mature frame. You can see that there's a sliding pelvis. This is the core of the torso that has a pilot seat but no articulation. Thigh, knee, this is more of the torso parts and then some shoulder parts. Uh, in the middle, we can't really see what it is, but it looks like it's waist and the ankle parts. And here we get a few pairs of hands, which is always nice. And then, what are these? So this is either shoulder or pelvis joint, not sure. Because this one looks to be similar in purpose. Yeah, but then this is definitely like inner frame for the arms. All right. Here we have more of the, uh, the inner frame accents for the uh, Testament Gundam. 
here you can see that there this is probably accent for the face that's right here so the the, the piece that we saw earlier that was red that has a hollow part hollow out part will probably go on top of this um, so we can see some calf parts and then a bunch of parts for the, the things on the back we can see that there's the little pistol that it comes with this is a different pistol from the IWSP and the um, what do you call that thing the strike strike noir yeah strike noir or the ashtray nor frame for that matter and here we have a little silver pilot figure and uh, yeah and these all look like weapon parts aside from this this is the collar this is another fairly loosely packed kit now our final runner so this looks like it's a mirrored version of the black part uh, with less pieces same goes for this so here we get the, the pistol again yeah. goes there. and we have a red red action base because yeah red action base so this is once again the the nicely designed uh, new action base one. So so that's still nice. I I do much prefer clear part clear ones, but um, it makes the sand has less presence when you're displaying it. And here we have uh, a water slide decal on top of the what do you call this thing the action base base and uh, a lot of the design dealing with the vps armor and uh, do dice red boys base yes do dice okay so this is the test type strike system What does this say? Generation on unsubdued nuclear drive assault module complex. Okay. What is your real name? So Tesman Gundam same uh, design as the uh, the box cover we have a uh, a little bit of cross outs because uh, we're using the strike frame and uh, also we're not using all the poly caps Let's see, so this really looks just like a regular Gundam design, all in all, other than, you know, the ridiculousness of the head, like, holy balls, look at this cockroach antenna. It is the most cockroach antenna I've ever seen. In a nice way, in a nice way, in a menacing way. Like the cockroach is flying towards your face and you got the duck. All right, so we got some of this. Not nothing too too interesting here. Uh, one thing to note is that this can take on the striker packs if you do want to do it. So this kit has got me thinking. Will the Eclipse Gundam use also the same uh, X-Frame from the Seed X-Frame? Because that would be interesting how they plan to do the foot transformation, the leg transformation. Yeah. 
So now the most important part of it, which is the Divine Striker pack. Is the the magical toy-esque transformation. If it transforms to look like something, it does certain things thing. You know, you turn it into a plane uh, a wing looking thing, it helps you fly. You turn it into a claw looking thing, it helps you claw. Forget about uh, the type of uh, actual design that is actually needed for a wing or a claw. And forget that, you know, when you have a wing, it's, it's really fragile, man. Anyways, so here is the, uh, how you can put it in the flight mode and then how you can put it in whatever that mode is. The Divine Striker, I don't know what this is. H1, H2, Dream 1 2. Huh. So you can see that if you want to use um, the IWSP, uh, you need a longer neck or something. Yep, you need a longer neck. And if you want to use IWSP, you also need to remove the shoulder pads and the little winglets at the back. I mean, the IWSP is an extremely, extremely cumbersome pack. So the shoulder armor parts of MG-1100 AO Strike Gundam ver RM, so separately, are required to attach a Lunker Striker and the Sword Striker. But it does not tell you how that works. Oh well, I'm not too bummed out about that yep so yeah this is compatible with striker packs if you have the striker pack already so that is all um, our unboxing today so today this is what we did in, in reverse order Lastly, we did the Testament Gundam. Just before that, there was the Sand Rock. Just before that, Grey Zeta. Before that, Kubali. Let's see if we can fit the last two kits in. We have the death size. And we have the F90. Here we can see that, you know, the, the Testament is a really, really small box. Next biggest one is Sandrock, then the Kubli, then the Zeta. Why they are so big? All the wasted parts. And it is actually a much denser kit. But anyways, um, thank you all for watching. This has been a unboxing of six P Bandai kits because God knows why I'm this crazy. 
Um, there's another set of five or six coming in. Um, I forgot what I ordered again. I know that there is a Tall Geese 2. There is the expansion pack for the Tall Geese 2, the, the Nataku and the Death Scythe. Yeah, and then the, the rest is just a blur. But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy my show of wealth. And uh, we'll see you next week where I actually build something. Naturally, do a vote. Do you, do you think we need to do a vote or do I just build whatever I want? I think I'll do build whatever I want. I'll start with the Kubali. I'll start with the Kubali here. Anyways, once again, thank you for watching. Till next time.